is Daryl Sear. I'm president of the RVMH Heritage Foundation in Elkhart, Indiana. Presently, we're in the uh, RV Museum. Uh, we've been at this modern location for the last uh, 10 years. It's an um, 85,000 square foot facility. It encompasses uh, the museum that we're in right now, as well as uh, the Hall of Fame, which has about 440 inductees in it. The very first unit in the museum here is a 1913 Model T convertible that's pulling a 1913 trailer, travel trailer that was built in California. It's an Earl trailer that's thought to be the very first production trailer in the United States. The second unit uh, is a, uh, a, as a 19 uh, 16 uh, Model T pickup truck that's been converted to a motorhome uh, with a telescoping camper on the back, uh, which is actually a triple slide out. The bed on the, on the uh, pickup truck was so short that people couldn't sleep in it, so they made it telescope out and then telescope each way uh, from uh, left to right and right to left. On the other side is uh, uh, Airstream, uh, everybody's heard of the Airstream uh, aluminum aircraft design trailer. So we have an a Airstream trailer which is now owned by Thor, which is the largest manufacturer of RVs in the world. Elkhart, Indiana, uh, where we're located, is known as the uh, RV capital of the world. It's also known as the birthplace of the manufactured housing industry. Uh, and early on that was called mobile homes. Uh, today, mobile homes is a thing of the past, but manufactured housing is uh, the proper terminology now. Yeah, this is a, a, a 1931 house car called the Tennessee Traveler, and uh, this was donated to the Hall of Fame of, about seven years ago. Back in the early days, back in the 30s, was a, a lot of tent trailers. That was very popular. They were called pop-ups or, or tent trailers. This was 1950, the, the very first uh, travel trailer that was made by uh, Fleetwood Industries. Holiday Rambler was a popular trailer for many, many years. Uh, they sold out to, uh, uh, to the Harley Davidson. Coachman was made in Middlebury, Indiana. This is their very first production model that was made by the Corson Brothers. And uh, uh, Coachman become a very large uh, manufacturer. At one time, they were the largest full line manufacturer of recreational vehicles. This is a, uh, it's called a Hunt house car. It was made in, uh, in 30, 1937, and uh, it, it was one, one of the first motorhomes, production type motorhomes. It was very popular. Uh, it had some unique features, uh, the way the step, if you look at the way the step comes out, and uh, it also had a combination shower and, and uh, toilet. Uh, where the, the toilet would swing underneath the uh, dinette. The units uh, started to be made in Elkhart back in the uh, early 30s, uh, production units, and uh, today Elkhart is uh, uh, responsible for 85% of the uh, total production in the whole United States. The Bolus Road Chief, which was the front runner to the Airstream, and interesting enough, Howley Bolus who owned Bolus was also the engineer who built the Spirit of St. Louis. So we have Bolus's personal unit from the late 30s, and we have Lindbergh who flew the Spirit of St. Louis. We have his personal unit from the 30s as well. So uh, that's kind of a, uh, the Spirit of St. Louis comes into play with uh, both of these units. The units that are sitting outside, uh, it's primarily it's a, a 19, 85 Travco uh, was a one owner. Uh, it's still in original shape. Uh, it was donated to the museum about uh, four years ago. In addition, there's a uh, actually a StarCraft camper out there. Uh, it was called a van conversion. This unit is perhaps the, the most popular and the most valuable unit in the entire collection. Uh, this was uh, in 1931, May West, and I, I, most everybody knows who Mae West is, famous actress back in the 30s. Uh, she worked for Vaudeville. They built her this motorhome special as a dressing room that she could use on the set when they were doing movies. So 
Uh, this unit is valued, uh, it's appraised right now at over a half a million dollars. This is a 1928 uh, Pierce Arrow, uh, house car they called it, or motor home. They only built three of these and the recession hit. Back in the, the stock market crashed uh, in 29 and they had only built three of them. This is the only one we know that's still in existence anywhere in, in, in the world. Of the, This is one of the three that was built. So this is the second most valuable unit in our collection. I mentioned earlier that uh, Elkhart is the RV capital of the world and one of the very first units built in Elkhart was built by Schultz Homes. And although it looks like an RV in 1939, they called it a Schult 8 by 20 foot house trailer. And that was really the beginning of the, uh, of the RV production in Elkhart. And Schult decided to build, continue to build mobile homes, which are now manufactured houses. And then other companies started building RVs. That actually is what's called a, uh, a toter that was used to deliver the mobile homes from the factory to the site. And so this was actually a Studebaker, which South Bend is where Studebakers were built. Please join us on our website uh, at www.rvmhhalloffame.org. You can actually do a virtual tour on our website. A lot of information there that will, that will give you the history, who the inductees are in the Hall of Fame. And uh, we also have uh, an event center. And at the event center, we have all types of weddings and quinceaneras and other not-for-profit organizations. It's a very popular place to visit here in Elkhart, Indiana. And I'd like to thank uh, everybody for watching. Cyril Scotty was one of the first to make uh, what's called a teardrop trailer, very low profile. Uh, it could be pulled behind uh, smaller cars and so forth. And uh, interesting enough, it was uh, made back in the 50s and uh, went out of business. And now the grandson of John Cyril, who was the founder, is now back in business building the Cyril trailer again. So. Uh, you'll see them in uh, 2016 and 17. The next unit we have here is a, a 1985 Fleetwood Bounder. This is the or original prototype that was made by Fleetwood. This was the first year that they started putting storage in the basement. It was called a basement model. So you could store a lot of things. In fact, the, the storage would go from one side of the motorhome all the way to the other side. So the Bounder, even today, is uh, one of the most popular here we have a, uh, a, a 1954 Spartan mobile home. Uh, it's, uh, it's over 40 feet long. And there was a movie made by uh, Lucille Ball called The Long Long Trailer. And this is identical to the one that was in the movie. Uh, it is, it's not the one that was in the movie, but it's identical to it. And uh, that movie still exists today. This was 42 feet long, eight feet wide, and uh, it was quite a popular movie in those days. This one is a, uh, a 29 covered wagon. It was the first production travel trailer in the United States, which basically was uh, just like the old covered wagons and a, uh, that was drawn by the oxen. And they uh, converted it over to where it could be hooked onto a trailer hitch and pulled. And so it really was a covered wagon. This is the 69 Pace Arrow, which was the very first motor home that uh, Fleetwood Industries built. And uh, that, that was donated to the museum about three years ago. GMC started building this in the uh, uh, 74, uh, to s actually 73 to 78. Uh, the General Motors was building this motorhome, which was really a sleek design and so forth. Uh, but they, no, they didn't build any after 1978, but it's a very popular uh, motorhome to retrofit. And uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of folks, especially ladies, believe it or not, are, are buying the, uh, the old uh, 
GMCs and they're doing a retrofit on them. And uh, as of right now, I have someone that wants to donate one that was retro that's uh, almost a Star Wars type GMC. So that's, uh, I've got to find a place to put it. This is a kit teardrop. And uh, this is a Model A. I think we can probably get a shot of it over here. It's a 1930 Model A Ford. Uh, yeah, they've come back with, uh, with a new called a TAB, T-A-B, teardrop that's uh, it's, uh, uh, kind of rounded off. And uh, it's kind of the difference between the initial, remember the little Volkswagen bug, and then the new Volkswagen. And that's kind of what they did with the teardrop. And Winnebago is, uh, you know, they, they are the, they're the Kleenex of the RV industry, of the motorhomes. Uh, people call motorhomes Winnebagos that aren't even Winnebagos. Uh, that's just a, a, a brand name identity, and uh, they're still in Four City, Iowa. They still build thousands of uh, motorhomes, and now they're into uh, travel trailers as well. And uh, this one is a 1980, no, I'm sorry, a 1967 uh, motorhome, Winnebago that was uh, donated to us. Elkhart had a, uh, has a, a parade, uh, downtown Elkhart, uh, every, every year. And I, I don't even remember what the uh, occasion was, but anyway, they'd have a parade. And this unit was uh, actually built uh, to drive in the parade. This, this little car was, it actually does work. They don't do that anymore, so uh, uh, they donated it to the Hall of Fame. The, uh, the RVMH uh, uh, Hall of Fame was started back in 1972 uh, in Elkhart, Indiana uh, by some uh, manufacturers and, and dealers. And it actually was run out of uh, one of the dealer's garage for the first few years. And uh, then in, uh, in 1985, uh, it had its first museum and, and uh, uh, building down in uh, Elkhart, and it was there for uh, 22 years, and then moved to this location uh, in 2007. And uh, so we've been at this location now for 10 years. This person here, Wally Byam, he, he, he was the founder of Airstream, and uh, he's, uh, uh, you know, Airstream still survives today and is known as the silver bullet or the aircraft design with the aluminum. Actually, the, the Hall of Fame was started in 1972 to honor the, uh, the founders of, the, of both industries, the RV and the manufactured housing. And uh, just about anybody who's anybody is in the Hall of Fame, from the Corsons that started Coachman to uh, John Crane and uh, John Hansen from Winnebago, John Crane from Fleetwood, uh, Wally Byams in here from Airstream. And uh, to be inducted, you have to, uh, you have, to have a sponsor. Uh, there's a form that needs to be filled out. There's about 10 questions on there about uh, uh, your history uh, in the industry and what segment that you served in. You have to be at least 25 years uh, in the industry to be considered. And, uh, and then it, uh, you need three letters of support for the nomination form. And then it goes before uh, on a, uh, a committee uh, that, that reviews all of the applications and they will choose uh, five from the RV industry and five from the manufactured housing industry each year. And so uh, that puts 10 every year and uh, uh, right now you're going to see over 440 on the wall from 1972. And uh, the class every year is inducted the first Monday of August in our event center uh, in front of uh, between around four to 500 people attend the event. If you look at some of these names, like when you're in the museum, you saw uh, Ciro Travel Trader, which was the first to make the teardrop. Well, this is the founder, John Ciro, is, is here. Art Rouse, who was the uh, publisher of the uh, Trailer Life magazine. Uh, uh, all of these people had a very uh, important part in the history of the RV or the uh, manufactured housing industry. Uh, Derek is, is still the president of ARC, 
ARC, which is the American Recreation Coalition, and that includes all types of recreation from uh, cruise ships to uh, the marine industry to the RV industry, you name it. Uh, and and he's, uh, uh, he's still president uh, and uh, very influential in uh, Washington, D.C. Our single largest contributor to the Hall of Fame is the Ingram family and uh, Boots Ingram, that was his nickname, Robert Ingram, but his uh, nickname was Boots. Uh, he was the uh, uh, founder uh, and he did manufacturing out of Wyoming. He was inducted in 2003, but his family has contributed more than any other single family or business to the Hall of Fame. Very, very strong supporter. This is uh, Wilbur Bontrager, uh, who is the son of the founder of Jayco, and uh, they just sold their company to Thor Industries for 576 million cash. <laughs> that was a year ago. This is Wade Thompson. The TH in Thor come from Thompson, okay? And uh, he passed away, uh, he was inducted the same year I was, 2008 and passed away just a couple years after that. And uh, Wade Thompson's partner, and Peter's still very active in the company, uh, chairman of the company, but the OR, the TH from Thompson and the OR is where Thor name came from. And they are the largest manufacturer in the world of RVs. They, they have uh, 40 some percent market share. Yeah, the library that we're in right now has over 20,000 publications dating back to the beginning of the, of the uh, RV industry, as to, which was Trader Life and, and some of those magazines, uh, RV Trade Digest and, and, and RV News and so forth. So, uh, uh, and they're in chronological order by year, and we have a lot of people come in and do a lot of research in the library, so we provide uh, 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 computers and tables and, and so forth so they can, uh, they can look up. It's amazing how many people come in to try to find, uh, an, they buy an old vintage camper and they want to fix it up and they're looking for any kind of ads to see what it might have looked like originally and, and, and so forth. So anyway, it's, uh, it's used a lot by people and, and that's great. And uh, here we have uh, some of the memorabilia from uh, the founder of Fleetwood. Enterprise, which Fleetwood was the, the largest manufacturer of RVs. At one time they had uh, uh, better than 35% market share. And uh, there's articles, there's lots of uh, uh, recognition uh, pieces here that, uh, for example, uh, this, uh, this silver platter says, uh, thanks a billion from your friends at Fleetwood. Uh, that was their first uh, billion dollar year. So it's, uh, it's amazing uh, how the company is, uh, how it grew and, and then it, uh, it kind of went by the wayside uh, after the cranes were no longer involved in it. The facility that we have right now is sitting on uh, about 15 of 40 acres. And as you look to the east, we're, we go all the way out to where the light green starts. The dark green is, is our property. And once we get out of debt, we're planning to raise from the different foundations and so forth, we want to raise the money to take us to the next vision. What we have here is our, our vision for the future. Uh, this is the existing Hall of Fame and Event Center right now. The white area, white outlined area here is a new event center that will be 60,000 square feet instead of the 20,000 square feet that we have today. And then the field that you're looking at out there will have a 20,000 square foot pavilion in the center of it. And around the edge will become a rally site, not a campground, but a rally site. In the RV industry, you have uh, Family Motor Coach Association has state associations uh, in, in, in every state. You have Winnebago has, a, uh, has rallies, uh, Forest River has rallies, Thor has rallies. People can come here and meet 
and use our facility and rallies are only four days long. There's a move-in day there and then there's uh, two days of fun and games and then there's a move-out day. So they're, they're in and out. So this would become a rally site which would be tied in with our museum and so forth and this would complete the development of our entire 40 acres. So this has a five-year plan to uh, once we're out of debt to collect the money and, and build the rally site and the pavilion first and then build the uh, 60,000 square foot event center which would have drop down walls so we could hold three 20,000 square foot events at one time. Uh, what we're going to do once we have this built, the, the pavilion and the rally site, and once we have th this 60,000 square foot completed, then we're going to convert the existing 18,000 square feet into a larger um, MH museum and we'll still have a small elegant Ingram Hall and then we're going to put in office space that would have about 15 offices which would create another uh, 150 to 200,000 in income a year for us. So this would, would, would uh, uh, this would complete our entire project then. So it, this, would, this is actually, of the new addition, this is phase one, this is phase two, and then this is the last phase. Looks like somebody made themselves cozy in there. I, it does, doesn't it?